I have good news. Tell me, Because please. I just moved into your birthday. He's the last person I dated before you know. So baby, this is the deal. I'm so sick and tired of the same Oh my God, I almost died. I almost died. Awesome. Is anyone else surprised that Gino and Jasmine are still together? Because I am, and for some very good reasons. We first met these crazies on a previous season of Before the 90 Days, and their story was a wild ride. Gino and Jasmine had a relationship dynamic that I at first didn't really understand, and I'm not just talking about the baby talk. Who's my little baby? <laughs> Who's my little baby? Who's my little baby? Me. Jasmine was jealous, controlling, and expected Gino to spend a lot of money on her. And Gino bended to her will and just seemed terrified of her most of the time. He seemed to just let her do what she wanted, but out of fear more than a real desire to spoil her. He didn't even have a job at the time, but let her spend money on big things like a pricey island vacation. Either he was just getting bullied into spending his money, or he had another secret underlying reason to do this that we didn't know anything about yet. I had a slight amount of sympathy for him at first, but it disappeared pretty quickly. <laughs> While on their pricey island vacation, Jasmine found out that Gino had done something unforgivable. Did you send her naked pictures of me? Gino had sent naked pictures of Jasmine to his ex, and all hell broke loose. Somehow now, things were starting to make sense. Yes, Jasmine was completely insane, but her trust issues had existed for a reason. And it would make sense that Gino was spending money on Jasmine out of guilt. It was surprising to me, though, that Jasmine and Gino ended up working things out. They ended up staying together at the end of the season. This fiery woman somehow looked past this unforgivable act. They even got engaged and started the K-1 visa process. There were so many issues already there, but even more of them came to light at the tell-all. You know, prefer to masturbate rather than making love to me. Apparently, their arguments are a big turnoff for Gino, so he prefers to do it himself. Jasmine had a big problem with that, though. I'm vegan, but I want your freaking meat. Give me the meat. I want it. And she also talked about the problem she had with Gino spending money on sugar babies in the past. The sugar baby thing was something Gino claimed he didn't do anymore. But ironically enough, it's revealed that he actually met Jasmine on a sugar baby website. That reveal made it all come together in my mind and answer a lot of questions. Like, why did Jasmine want Gino to spend so much money on her? And why was she so worried that he was cheating? What's the password? What's the password? He was a sugar daddy for probably more than just her when they first got together. And no, this guy and the word sugar daddy don't fit well together in my head at all. But to me, this explains the root of their issues and why he inappropriately sent his ex nude photos of her. This is why they initially had a transactional relationship. And if you think about it, it probably made the lines for their real romance pretty blurry. I'm not defending Gino in any way. Jasmine's feelings of betrayal are valid, but their issues with trust and intimacy have a new meaning to me. Really, the only remaining question still lingering in my head after this was why did Jasmine stay with Gino after all of this? On the premiere episode of Before the 90 Days Season 6, Jasmine and Gino still seem to have the same struggles as before. Jasmine still expects Gino to spend a lot of money on her. This box alone is $320. How many do you think a woman would need? I would say five to be safe. Side note, why did I think for a second that Gino was getting a wig? The sexual issues between Jasmine and Gino also seem to be worse than before. And somehow Jasmine thinks that becoming a virgin again will help that. So I have to be very careful with how I word this on YouTube. Basically, Gino can't finish anymore unless he's doing it alone by himself. If you get what I mean. And she explained that with no censoring to this poor doctor. Le bailo, le modelo, se lo it seems like these problems are getting to Jasmine, and you can tell that she's been making more changes to her body. I thought she was beautiful before, but it seems like she's going the Darcy and Stacy route. The fact that Gino and Jasmine met under the whole sugar baby scenario makes me think that Gino has had some problems with intimacy for a while. Maybe he likes to have a certain power in the relationship to feel comfortable. Or maybe he has a problem with porn. But those are not things that Jasmine can fix. Also, the long wait for their visa has been putting stress on their relationship. It's been 12 months of waiting for the approval, so Gino is taking a trip to Panama to visit Jasmine. 
And look at that, he upgraded his hats. All I can think of is Chris now when I see these hats. With their issues pretty much being the same as before, I was wondering what their story was going to be about this season. I really think that TLC wanted to get these two on when they started their 90 days, but they can't yet. So the focus now seems to be on their waiting for the visa. And there's a new issue of Jasmine having to move to different temporary apartments. We've been playing this game for months. It's honestly unlocking new levels of stress even though Gino does have a job now, he did the K-1 visa paperwork without a lawyer to save money. So is that the story for the season? The question if their visa will get approved? Will Jasmine just keep having to move until it does? That is where I thought this was going, until Jasmine reveals why she picked the specific luxury apartment that she made Gino pay for. I just moved into your birthday. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Jasmine moved into an apartment next door to a friend of hers, a friend that she has dated. Osama wants to remind you to subscribe to the Kibbles channel. If you don't, he will appear in your window and read you poetry. Touch me, hold my bones. Dan is not a regular friend because he's the last person I dated before Gina. Well, Daniel, Jasmine is about to repeat your storyline and make it so much worse. We were together just for a short period of, of time, and Dan is a good guy, and he's handsome. Apparently, this guy couldn't give Jasmine the passion that she wanted. But also, Gino doesn't seem to be doing that for her either. So I guess they brought in this guy to shake up their story while they wait for their visa to get approved. Also, she says that her naked pictures getting out made her lose her job as a teacher. Losing my job was a big low for me because being a teacher was a huge part of my identity. So now she is completely dependent on Gino financially. And she made a bolder move than Danielle and moved next door to her ex. Why do I feel like this is some sort of evil plot for revenge? Gino is obviously going to find out about this ex when he visits. Maybe she doesn't even plan to move to the US at all and just simply destroy Gino in this process. There's already been so much damage done already. Gino sending Jasmine's nudes to his ex, their very public intimacy issues, and now Jasmine no longer has a job and is living next door to her ex. You know, don't settle for something that's not up to what you want for yourself. We are definitely in for another wild ride this season. How will this go? Is there even a chance that this will work for them? I'm also starting to wonder if Gino really did apply for the K-1 visa or not. There has to be something going on with that. The preview for the season does show them trying to work out their issues, but Jasmine does lose it in a future episode, just like she did on the last season. Has Gino done more messed up stuff? Is Jasmine pulling some sort of revenge plot on Gino? What do you think will happen this season? And really, how and why are these two still together? I think we will learn pretty quickly if it's because Jasmine is stuck with no job and doesn't have a choice. This is about to be an even bigger mess than last season. I have so much pain that I'm so broken. Be honest, you will be happier without me. <gasps> I'm excited to see how this all plays out. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye!